So we learned all about this Redux flow here and that's all nice. But it has nothing to do with React, right? I always said that you could use it with plain JavaScript, with Angular JS, with, with whatever you want. But here we want to use it with React JS. And in order to do so, I need to add another import or another package to my application. I need to install React Redux to add the save flag. So why do I need React Redux? We already got React and we already got Redux, right? Yeah, and React Redux is the bridge. Redux is standalone, doesn't need React, and React is standalone, doesn't need Redux. But React Redux, the package I just installed, is the bridge between both. So React Redux allows me to take my old application here and hook it up. So how do I hook it up then? Well, let me create a new component here, which I'll name app.js. And I'll use all my old code here, the one I commented out, besides the render function, I don't need this, in my app component. Comment it in, remove the render import, as I said, I don't need that, adjust these imports, because now app is in the same folder as the other components here. And I will remove this state related thing here because state will now be handled by Redux and you'll soon learn how. So here I'll just pass max. And again, I will change this later on. So now I got my app component, but still it's not hooked up, right? Well, let's go back to the index.js file, remove everything but the imports here, the React imports and the render function down here, and comment that in. But I'll also take my render function here, leave the import at the top, and I'll set it here at the end of the file. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. I'll also remove all my dispatchings here because we'll soon do this from the React app. And now I got my render method here. I want to render app. Now in order to do this, I need to import that from components and then app. So here I can import app. Only if I export it in this app.js file here though. So I'm importing app and now I'm rendering app here. So with this, oops, I also need to, shouldn't have removed that. I also need to add my react import here at the top again. So with that, if I reload this, we'll go back to the application, you see it's now running. Of course this button is not working, but now we got it running again, but we don't, we don't have it connected yet. We have our, application, but it's not connected to Redux at all. In order to connect it, I have to do two steps. I want to connect my React.js application with the Redux store so that the state is passed from the store to my React app. And then I want to be able to dispatch actions. So these both or these two directions are needed. Well, let's first connect the store with the React app. I do this by adding another import here at the top. I need to import something from React Redux. And this something here is called provider because it provides us the store. This provider is then used here in the render method. I'm just splitting this to make it a bit easier to read like so. This provider is then used here and wraps our app like this. I'll explain this in a second. So our app component is wrapped by this provider component, which is provided by the React Redux package. Now, as you already see, this wants to give me a store in my ID, kind of auto completed that wrongly, but it wants to pass a store as a prop, kind of. And this should refer to my store here, to this constant. 
So I'm passing my Redux store to the store property of this provider component and then I'm wrapping my whole app, and that's important, my whole app, my root component, in this provider array here, or provider, not array, provider component here. So that is how we connect the store to our Redux app. However, this doesn't change our application here. It still looks fine. We don't have an error. That's only some hot reloading stuff here. But it's also not really using the store. In order to use the store, I need to do something in my app.js file here. I hooked up my state, my store, to the whole application, but now I need to hook up or to define which properties of my state I need in which component and which actions I want to dispatch there. So these are the two things I need to tell Redux. Which properties do I want to use in my component and which actions. So this is done through two methods. The first one, I'll define it as a constant here, is called map state to props. Now, of course, you could change the name here, but that's the default name you, you use and you see in the documentation and which is pretty explicit about what it does. Map state to props means which properties of my global application state do I want to use in this component and then to which local properties in this component do I want to map them. Therefore, this is a fat arrow function which gets the state passed from Redux and here in the function body, all I do is I return a JavaScript object where I create key value pairs, where the key is the property name as I can use it in my component. So let's say here I want to access all the user related stuff. Well, then I can access user state and then here reducer and math would be state math reducer. And if you don't want to use the reducer names here, you can also go to your index.js file. Here, when we combine the reducers, you can of course also assign different names to the keys. So math and user, for example. And then you could use just user and math. So here I'm using all the properties of my global state from both reducers and this allows me to use them like this. I can simply output or pass the username as we do it here as a prop to my user component and how do I access my username? Simply by accessing this props and Redux will now automatically populate my props. This is still the React.js props property the one you learn in the React.js basics course, Redux all automatically creates them for me or populates them for me. And here I access user, this one here, this key I set up here where I map my state to props. So this is the one automatically created by Redux. Well, and user has this name property because now we're here, we're in the user reducer and here the state has a name and an age. So here I can access name. If I save this, well, we get a problem here because right now this is not happening. Just because I create my constant here doesn't execute this function, right? I just created a map state to props method here, but I'm not executing it. Therefore, when trying to access this, it of course doesn't find it because right now Redux is not giving me this. I haven't executed this map state to props function. So in order to execute it, I will have to call another function, connect. Connect connects React.js with Redux. We already did this with the provider here, keep this in mind, but here we only provide the store. We then also have to connect each component which needs access to the store. So connect here 
expects a map state to props function without parentheses, it will get executed automatically, but it also expects another function here. And my IDE is already telling me this, map this patch to props. That's the second part where we then set up which actions, actions we want to use in this component. So I'm copying my constant here, map state to props, and name it to map this patch to props. Now map this patch to props takes an argument, which I'll name this patch here. And this also returns a JavaScript object where I also set up key value pairs, where the key is the prop name created by Redux for me. But the value is an action, a method, which gets executed. So for example, we could have a set name method here. Set name is the props name then. Use a fed arrow function where I then have name as an argument and where I here simply call my dispatch method then and this dispatch method expects to get what? Well, of course, the same action definition as we used in previous videos. So the type of the action, which should be set name and the payload. So let's set this to name, the argument I'm passing here. Of course, all these argument names here are totally up to you. You could name them to whatever you want to uh, name them. So with that, I can pass map dispatch to props here, also without parentheses. And then this connect method here will actually return me another function. This function then takes my app here. Therefore, I remove the export keyword here from this class. This is now passed as an argument to the function this connect function returns me. And instead I, whoops, did not want to do this. Instead I export this as a default. I did a lot here and we're not quite finished, but here's a good point to stop and make sure that everything is clear until now because it's key to understand. And I know that this have been some complicated steps. So what's happening here? I'm calling the connect function in my app.js file, the file where I create my react.js component. I'm calling the connect function because I want to tell React Redux that I want to connect this component here to my Redux store. Yes, I'm already providing the store for my whole application, but it does not mean that it automatically connects all my components. And that's a good thing because this way I can choose which properties of the global state and store my component needs. I do tell React Redux which properties and actions I want to use with these two methods here, the or functions, the map state to props function and the map dispatch to props function. The first one tells React.js which properties of the global state do I want to use in this component and to which local properties accessible through the props keyword do I want to map them in my component. The map dispatch to props action or function here does the same, but now not for the properties of the global state, but instead for the actions I can execute and well send to my reducers. In the map dispatch to props function here, I also map key value pairs, set name for example, which will also be accessible through this dot props. But the thing I mapped, the value, is not the value of any state property. Instead, it's a function which dispatches an action. And an action is just a JavaScript object with a type and a payload. This function here happens to have an argument name you might also have some actions or functions which don't have an argument. But here I want to set a name and I want to be able to pass this name dynamically, which is why I pass this. An alternative would be to hard code a name here, but I don't want to do this. So this connect function is then executed, tells me what to wire up. And this connect function then returns another function. 
That's done by React Redux. It returns me a number function, which then expects to get the component which I want to hook up until this point here, the bluely marked one, we haven't told it yet. So which allows me to then tell it which component do I want to hook up. The app component in this case, the one here. And this whole thing here, the second function call here then, gives me back a hooked up component kind of, which I then export from this file. And in order to use this, I then have to go to my index.js file and here where I import app, I have to remove the parentheses, the curly braces, because now I use a default export. And in ES6, you don't use curly braces if you have a default export in the file you're importing. You may choose any name you want to do, choose here. Here I use app so that I can leave this code as it is. But now I'm importing, whoops, I'm importing the wired up component, which is created by the connect method, the connect function here. With all this set up, there is one thing left to do. Connect, of course, is a function which isn't known yet. So I have to add the import at the top and import connect from React Redux. So add this import here. With this, if I reload my application, you see it's running fine. The button is still not working, but the username max is displayed correctly. And keep in mind, this username is already using React Redux because I'm passing the username here as a property to my user component. This user component is not wired up to Redux. It gets this data passed from the parent, classic React.js work here. But my app component, which passes the data to the child, this here, this props user.name uses my Redux state because this props user refers to this user property I wire up here. And that's important to understand. As a side note, there is nothing wrong with still passing props to subcomponents. Indeed, that's not just not wrong, that's a good pattern to use. You don't wanna hook up every component in your application to Redux, only the ones which need to be hooked up, but it's totally fine to still pass data down you just want to avoid these complex constructs where you have to handle state in all kinds of components and it really gets out of hand where to handle what. With this, it's now also time to change the way we change this username. I'm no longer using this change username bind, anything like this. I can get rid, rid of this and also get rid of the constructor. Instead here, what I want to do is, I want to use this props, oops, one dot is enough, props, and then here I'm mapping set name. So set name. Now, since I want to pass an argument here, I'll make it easy by using a fat arrow function here, which allows me to execute set name without executing it immediately. So set name. And here I'll hard code Anna into this, though of course you could also fetch the value from an input or whatever you want to do. So with this, if I reload my application and click this button, now it's changed to Anna and you'll also see that our middleware is getting active here and is executed whenever I click on this. So even though the text doesn't change anymore, you'll still see I'm dispatching actions as I click on this button. And this is how I hook this up. Again, keep in mind, only the app component is hooked up. Of course, you may hook up any component you need to connect to Redux, but here only the app component is connected and then the other components receive their data through props being passed down to them. But if you wanted to avoid passing this change username action as, well, a callback here to my main component, you could also hook up the main component directly to Redux and therefore get rid of this part here, for example. That would work too and would be a nice challenge to implement, wouldn't it? So definitely go ahead and try this.